Today's episode is all about refeeds and diet breaks, how to use them and when to use them in your lifestyle cut. We should start by defining what in the world is a refeed and what is a diet break. A refeed is going to be a structured intake over one to three days with a higher caloric intake than your baseline diet in your deficit. A diet break is going to be one to two weeks back at your perceived maintenance after you've been dieting for a period of time at a caloric deficit. When we're in a calorie deficit, our goal is to lose body fat. So why in the world would I increase my intake? Because that seems like it would be taking away from my overarching goal. There are five reasons why I would implement a refeed. To improve sleep, training performance, recovery, their hunger management, as well as psychological benefits within their mood and energy output. But, but Alex, um, my favorite Instagram account said that refeeds basically do like nothing for your fat loss. Like, so what are you talking about? Research is only one piece of the puzzle. What that research was looking at was hormonal function and leptin level down regulation, as well as metabolic adaptation. And to get out of this just nerdy terms, let's break it down and make it very simple. The hope when studying refeeds within the literature has been to increase the rate of overall fat loss or to decrease the metabolic adaptation that you were experiencing. By decreasing metabolic adaptation, you would be able to diet on higher calories over the entire duration of your deficit and not have to get more and more aggressive by utilizing the refeeds. With metabolic adaptation, leptin, that hormone that is stored in your fat tissue that tells you, bro, I'm full, also downregulates. The hope within the research was to slow this process down to allow for us to diet on higher calories over a longer period of time while also still being able to lose the same or even greater amounts of body fat. The results from this research did not show that to be the case. But one good thing that did come from the research is that the group who had the refeeds was able to lose the same amount of body fat as the group who did not use the refeeds over the same duration of time. And with that information, it can still be a very useful tool. What am I looking for to implement a refeed? This is generally going to be all about the client's biofeedback. Are they having very high hunger? Are we having hindered sleep? Are we seeing an energy output that is extremely low? Higher irritability? Is our training performance decreasing over an extended period of time? If they're showing those biofeedback markers, who is this going to be the most beneficial for? I often see this be beneficial for male clients who are roughly under 15% body fat and female clients who are roughly under 20% body fat. That doesn't mean that they're the only group of people who can use refeeds when they're dieting. It simply means that I see a greater response from that group of individuals. I originally came over here to check myself out, to be 100% honest. I'm in a deficit myself, and <laughs> I must say, I'm having quite a bit of success. So if you guys could skedaddle, I'll catch you in the next clip. How and when will we use the refeeds? How is going to be dependent on you as the individual, and this is going to be important for you to track the data. A general rule of thumb to start with is going to be 200 to 300 calories increase from your baseline diet for each refeed day. And I would say starting with a refeed of two days maybe three days, depending on what your feedback is. Pay attention to these factors because this is a sign that your body is doing a better job of getting into a rest and digest state. We need to remember that being in a calorie deficit is a stress on our body. And so as the calorie deficit continues, that stress is going to mount. And by giving ourselves more calories, it allows for our body to get into a more relaxed state and get the sleep and recovery that is needed so that we can continue to lose body fat moving forward. When timing the meals that I'm going to have the increased carbohydrates on the refeed days, I like to have it around training. And if I'm having trouble with sleep, I'm going to put a lot of those carbohydrates in my final meal of the day. When timing it around training or non-training days, I feel that the consensus is to do it on training days. And I'm going to be outside of that crowd where I like to have it on maybe one training day and one 
full rest day to allow for the body to fully recover. In a lifestyle deficit, I think refeeds can be very useful, but I think that the absolute best tool is going to be diet breaks. I think it gives the client an opportunity to look forward to something and gives them a more finite window that they're going to be in the calorie deficit. When implementing a diet break, you're going to take your calories back to maintenance for one to two weeks. What I like to do is that I will have a client diet for 21 days or three weeks hard really pushing themselves and challenging themselves to lose maximal body fat with the opportunity to have a one week right back at their caloric maintenance or their perceived maintenance for an entire week following the three week push. Another way that I will implement diet breaks is that I will have the client diet for seven weeks and have them in a caloric maintenance or that diet break for one to two weeks after the hard dieting for seven weeks. I find this to be tremendously useful for the clients who are wanting to lose more than 20 or maybe even 30 pounds and are needing to diet for six or more months. This is where the research has not tapped into much of this space. They have not looked at long durations of diets, six months, nine months, even into a year in implementing diet breaks. I do believe if the research was to venture into this category that we would see benefits in metabolic adaptations as well as ability to lose body fat over longer durations of time. We are looking for the same benefits that we were within the refeed by improving overall recovery, improving training performance, improving energy levels, hunger signaling, all those different factors. But I do believe that the diet break, because it is a longer duration of time at a little bit higher of a total caloric allotment over that duration, that we have a greater chance of having the benefit that we're seeking. Refeeds and diet breaks are not a must within your diet. You do not have to utilize them. And if you dig into the research, you will see that by continuously dieting, that you will lose the same amount of body fat. But if you feel like you lack adherence and you are doing everything within your lifestyle to make sure that those biofeedback markers are in a great spot and you're still struggling with that adherence, by utilizing refeeds or by utilizing diet breaks, this may be a great way for you to stay on your diet and get the fat loss that you desire. Enough of this refeed diet break mumbo jumbo. Let's take a look at Sue and I's diet and see how this past week went. There you go. There you go. Welcome back to my desk. We have finished the first half of our diet and six weeks are under our belt. In this six weeks, we've dealt with our own adversity as well as life things popping up that we've had to acclimate and be flexible to. And this is one of the key things that we want to drive home throughout the entirety of the series. Not everything has to be perfect, but we are more consistent over the greater majority of the deficit and we're going to reach our goals in doing so. This week was no different. Sue ended up not training for the entire week. And for me, I had a three day period where I didn't track for the entire time. I had a friend in town who I was so excited to see. It was his first time visiting. We went to a PGA golf tournament event and I wanted to be completely present with him and weighed my pros and cons of do I want to hit my food exactly perfect or do I want to take a great friend out, enjoy the city, show him some of my favorite restaurants and just be 100% present with him. And being present with him was my number one priority. But guess what? That did not take away from my fat loss in this diet. And it's because some of the tools that I want to share with you today. When people say they don't track, I think that individuals immediately go to it's hog wild season. It's time to eat all the foods that have been off limits for the duration of my diet. It's time for me to eat copious amounts of those foods. When in reality, when I had the opportunity to eat the foods I normally would eat, I had them. But when I wanted to go out to eat and try different things, I was mindful of the foods that I was consuming and did not go crazy and ate to satiate and made those meals about the people I was with rather than the food itself. I continued to prioritize my hydration. We got lots of movement in, as well as still getting my training sessions in while the friend was in town. And so really, the only real difference was is that I wasn't 100% accurate in tracking every bit of my food. Some simple tips that I would share with you as you have maybe family visiting or you have friends visiting, have some of those conversations that you're going to organically have take them on walks i'm proud of us for going on this walk <laughs> after a long day it's like these moments that you don't really want to do it and you know that you're going to feel better for doing it because it's important and it makes you feel good 
and you just need to get going to be able to do it. Have those conversations there. Get movement for everyone as that's going to help you in your fat loss journey, as well as getting everyone some movement for their overall health in general. Now that you have some general context of some things that transpired over this past week, let's take a look at the physique photos to see some of the changes because this was a week of great success on the scale as well as physique photos for both Sue and I. One thing that we have touched on throughout the duration of the diet thus far with Sue has been that she's had more of a body re composition is that her scale weight has stayed within the same ballpark, but we've continued to see change through her physique photos week after week. This past week, she saw she saw an average weight loss of 1.4 pounds. And this was great. Even with the adversity of her not training for the entire week, she was able to still see positive strides within her fat loss. One of the things that you may notice if you take a week off of training or two weeks off of training, you may feel like you've lost all the muscle that you've worked so hard to have because you've lost lines or, or density or bubbliness to your muscle bellies. This happens because the body is very smart. And if we are not going to put the muscle under tension that is demanding the resources that your body is having, it's going to take those resources and place it elsewhere. There's a lot of things going on in your body. And if you're not going to be resistance training and needing those nutrients to nourish the tissue, to facilitate that physical activity, your body's going to place them elsewhere. As Sue picks her training back up this next week, she's going to feel tighter. The roundness to her muscle bellies is going to get back into action and she's going to feel like she gained all the muscle back just in a short period of time. Sue's side profile photos from last week to this week are a great representation of what we're talking about. Last week, she was 1.4 pounds heavier on average, but if you look at the physique photos, her legs look leaner from the last week's photos relative to this week's photos. And so that really just displays exactly what we're talking about. This week was a turning point for me and my photos. What we saw over the past two weeks was the first two week period where my weight was a little bit more stagnant on average. I had a big drop over this past week where I was 215.5 at the end of last week. And this week I weighed in at 213.4. So I had a 2.1 pound on average fat loss. And so it was a big stride. And when we look at physique photos, we'll see even greater strides being made between the two photos. One thing Thing that sticks out to me within my photos is that I pulled a good bit of body fat off of my waist this past week. And we will also see that I'm continuing to get leaner through my legs. I will say this is probably the leanest that my legs have been this early in a diet. I generally would pull body fat from my midsection and just my upper arms and those different factors. This time around, I'm pulling a ton from my legs and mostly my arms and my lower back and my abdomen have been the slowest to progress, which has been a total flip of the switch for me. And it's been a little challenging mentally, but I know that it's just the way that this time around is gonna go. And then the next time that I diet, it may be a little bit different as well. And it's not that I'm doing anything wrong, it's just that the body is going to take away and put back body fat at its own discretion with its own mind uh, at hand, mind at hand, I don't know. When we look at the back photo, this is even going to be a better representation that I'm having some of the body fat being pulled off of my lower back as well. So we made big strides visually for myself between these two weeks. And I wanna add that the photos that we're seeing here were after the three days of me eating completely intuitively with a friend in town. A big part of why I believe I was able to still see the quality of physique photos and the fat loss that I desired was because I was very active active with my steps. I was over on my steps that what I would normally have of the 8K goal that I have in place, I was really around 11, 12, 13,000 over that three day period. So my caloric expenditure was higher to match maybe a higher intake of calories that I may have had over that three day span. Because of the circumstances that we knew were going to be transpiring over this past week, we did not make any nutritional adjustments to further our fat loss. Because Sue had some travel over the weekend as well as the time I had with my friend. Going into this next week, this would be an opportunity for us to get a little bit more aggressive within the diet to allow for ourselves to get into a deeper deficit. But when we already know we have things on our plate, it's not really an opportunity to do so, to just add more stress to the situation that's already taking us out of our normal routine. 
In being halfway through this diet, I'm very pleased with the progress that we both have made. As I continue to reiterate to myself and to you guys, is that the best progress is ahead of us. And the more that we can stay consistent, the better results that we're going to see, and I'm excited for it. I was hesitant to share this as we get to the halfway marker in this diet. As a contest prep coach, my mind immediately goes to the resources that I could use to further my results, to quicken my results. And it's like an, a natural reaction for me to, you know, say to myself, add in a little bit of clean, add in a little bit of growth hormone, add in X, Y, and Z. No one's no one's gonna notice, it doesn't really matter, it's going to improve the marketing, it's, it's worth it. And I've continued to tell myself no, because that's not who I'm doing this for. If I wanted to show off what I could do with enhancements in place, then I would do a, a contest prep, but that's not what this is. This is a way that you and everyone watching, there, there's no gatekeeping here. There's nothing that's hidden from you guys in what we're trying to do in, in losing this body fat. You're getting every single tool that we're using from week one all the way through week 12 and what you can continue to use past the time of this diet being in place. I wanted to be honest with you and I feel very good that I finally did share this with you. My sister was over yesterday and she said that I looked great and this outfit looked great. So I put it back on for this video. You know what? I think you look great in everything. Oh, okay. okay. Blah, 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 blah. How did this past week go for you diet wise? It went pretty dang well, and especially with going out of town, it's actually funny because when we went out of town earlier in this diet, I came back to a lower scale weight than I had seen, and then going out of town again, I'd come back to a lower scale weight. So I think I should just maybe like stay out of town at this point, but it really just gave me so much affirmation and confidence in the way that we do travel or within being intuitive as you were, of being able to navigate through food because we have so much experience with food and understanding that within a diet, we're not trying to necessarily make it the most comfortable for ourselves of being in the spot where you're always feeling satiated and full. I think being able to let that hunger drive you even when you're not tracking is a really powerful and cool thing to be able to do. How did you go about your nutrition with the travel over the weekend? The travel I had was actually a women's retreat. So if any of you guys know us, you've probably heard us talk about our massage therapist, Taylor, who is absolutely incredible. She has magic hands. And so she put on a women's retreat and there was about 10 girls locally that were actually all involved in health and fitness in some degree. And she asked if I could help within the catering. And I did some of the cooking and then I also had some help from our friend Brian to be able to get the food all ready. So I was able to have a lot more control over the food because I was in charge of making sure we had the meals for the main meals there. But I was also able to pack my pancakes for the morning and then have different snacks there with me. So I actually ended up, I brought my food scale, but I challenged myself to be present and to really be able to just be there and trust myself with food and knowing how to measure it and eyeball it. And it ended up really working out and I had a great time still being able to snack with people, but keep a little bit of a tab in there, plug it all in and be set to go. That's awesome, and I'm glad you had such a great time. How did training go for you this past week? You mean the lack of training <laughs> went this past week? There ended up being too much on my plate this week. Tuesday and Wednesday, those were both madhouse days. And then Thursday was absolutely a madhouse. And not that training isn't a priority, it obviously is a large priority for me, but it was looking at the business and looking at what was coming up in our life and what I just had to get done. And I guess part of that is a little bit of poor planning of thinking that I had more time than I did. So I guess it's still a little bit on me, but it felt like a lot of things popped up this week that I had to be flexible for. Now I am going on of, I didn't train 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm not gonna be training today. I've been having like an internal like fight with myself all freaking day because I was like, okay, if I get up early, maybe I can train in the morning. And then the morning I was just slammed getting through as much desk work as I could. And so then I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a short dog walk. I'll be able to squeeze it in during this break. And then it was just, I had to get other tasks done. But that's four days in a row of not training, which isn't the end of the world, of course. But in this circumstance, I was just frustrated because I wanted to train. I enjoy training. I look forward to it. Uh, and now I won't be training Saturday. I'll be out of town. And I'm afraid that with how much I pushed myself this week and then travel and trying to come back, that I might be too tired to train on Sunday, which I just have to accept that if that does happen, that that's the case. And I'll pick up training on Monday and it's what you do 90% of the time and all the other things I say to clients. And I'm okay with that. It's not going to ruin everything. It's not going to ruin my progress. And we're going to be just fine. I had everything planned out and I know I talked about it in the travel video of pre-planning when you're training, going into travel. So you don't end up of having a lot of rest days by accident before you go out of town. But that's just kind of how, <laughs> how life happened, how the cookies fell, whatever the sayings. I ended up going five days without training. So it was a little bit of an unintentional deload. But even though I was so upset and frustrated because I really wanted to train, I was excited to train, I love training, and I had new training that I was excited to dive into, I was able to look back and recognize I really couldn't have pushed myself and gone into those training sessions with the load that was going on that week. Because we always need to keep in mind that training is a stress on the body. And there's some times where stress levels are so high that training is going to push you out of what you can recover from. And even more so with being in a dieting phase, just because you have less calories to use for recovery there. So I didn't get training for five days, but as soon as Monday came around, I hit the ground running and I'm really excited about this new phase, especially because they're about 45 minute sessions. So it's a nice little break from those longer sessions, be able to get in there, get it done and test my endurance. I'm excited for you to get into this new phase. And if you guys are wanting us to get into the trenches with our training in one of the future videos, leave us a comment below. One thing that I am very excited about moving forward is vacation. I am ready. <laughs> I know we've got six weeks left of this diet, but every day I'm waking up and I'm like, St. Bart's baby, St. freaking Bart's. I'm ready for the beach and relaxation. I mean, I've been looking for swimsuits. I have been doing my due diligence. I've ordered a few, returned a few, trying to find the one that I feel the best in, but I too am so ready to get going. Now, before we leave, because this is the halfway point, I know some of you guys are following along. So share any of the wins that you've had in the past six weeks for your dieting, or if you're just doing lifestyle things, but making sure you're checking off all those non-negotiables that we've put in place. We are so proud of you and of course, proud of ourselves. So we'll catch you in the next one, guys. Pretty good. Head, got a walk or something. Yeah. Good, I got a pee.